and until now, the decision to allow patients in a permanent vegetative state to die had remained in the hands of the law. But yesterday's ruling by the Supreme Court means if doctors and relatives agree, they will no longer need the permission of a court to withdraw food and water. And some of the thousands of families affected have welcomed the ruling, but opponents warn patients have lost a layer of protection. John Deegan is a pro-life campaigner, director of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. Uh, morning to you. And this really specifically talks about uh, patients who are in what is called a vegetative state. Um, what do you think of the ruling? Well, I'm, I'm very alarmed by the ruling. Uh, it now means in the UK that patients can be deliberately dehydrated and starved with the express intention uh, of, of ending their life. Uh, I think that's, that's alarming. But also, in this case, it means it can be done without any court ever having to look at it. Um, at, at the moment, they're saying that this is about people with the permanent vegetative state. And it's a very difficult time, isn't it, for families and doctors. And in many cases, they have agreed that this is the course of treatment. Why put them through going to a court, which, which was, brings enormous stresses with it? Well, it, it covers people in a, a so-called persistent vegetative state, but also those in a, a minimally conscious state. So that's people who can be intermittently aware. But it's not about withdrawing treatment. I think there are, there are times when, of course, you've got to accept that treatment is burdensome for the patient. This is about providing a, a patient with the necessity of life. You know, food or fluid don't treat any condition. It's, it's, it's necessary for any human being to be given those things. So it's, it's a basic care that should never be deprived. And of course, the reality is that there's always a lot of emotion for families round about these situations. It, it, it is burdensome for them. And I mean, I've all the sympathy in the world for families who have to undergo this. But we live in a society where we have the resources to help them with that burden. So our NHS has to put the patient at, at the heart of the decision. So. A decision cannot be based on the fact that the family is finding it burdensome to care for the, their loved one. Uh, we recognise that, we, we have sympathy for them, but the, the law and the, the policy of the NHS has to rise above the, the particular emotional situation and it has to apply principles which protect all patients. And and it's, not the, just, the, it's not just a family decision, it's, it's doctors involved in that decision as well. But yeah. um, can I just ask you, for example, if a person had set out in their will their wishes, would you, would you change your mind? Well, I think, I, I think you know, often we look to the future and think, well, I wouldn't like to be in that situation. But the reality of experiencing it and to experience being dehydrated is a particularly unpleasant way to have your life ended. So I think someone shouldn't be allowed to say that they should have their life ended in that way. OK, and are you going to challenge the ruling? Well, this is the Supreme Court. I think that the, the Supreme Court... Uh, is the highest authority in the UK. We, it would be, have to find a way um, of someone taking this further than that to Strasbourg. So it's, it's a decision I think it, it conflicts with human rights laws. I mean, uh, human rights laws say that you cannot deprive someone of life. But here we have doctors um, and the court now turning their back on those doctors who can decide to deliberately end a life by starving a patient and, and dehydrating them. I, th I think that's quite alarming. And if we can find some way to challenge it, of course, we, we, we would do that. Uh, John Deegan, thank you very much for your time.